So I often get people asking me what my experience was like interning at Amazon over the summer, and I usually respond with the same thing, that it went really well. Oh my gosh, I deleted all my code again. No, oh, they're going to think I'm stupid. Oh, my meeting is in 15 minutes and I don't have a single thing to talk about with my mentor. Yeah, it definitely went really well. <laughs> What's up everybody, I'm Pedro, a former Amazon software engineering intern and soon to be full-time engineer. And today I'm gonna be walking you guys through what I wish I knew before my internship started. Now I'm gonna break this video up into before, during, and after sections, uh, just to keep things in chronological order and make it easier on myself. But I'll make sure to put timestamps in the description for each of the sections and also for the topics within each section so that you can just go to whatever you're interested in listening to. But with that out of the way, let's get started with the video. And the first thing I'll talk about is what I wish I knew before my internship started. So I only really had one thing that I wish I'd known before my internship started, and it was that I don't need to learn anything before the internship. I was really worried going in that I wasn't going to know any of the tech that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, so I spent about a month before the internship learning about Java and REST APIs, and I even coded up some sample programs in order to practice what I was learning. And honestly, all the work that I did only really helped me to understand the kind of Java code that we would be writing, which coming from a strong Java background like myself, I could have picked up in a couple of weeks just during the internship. You know, it's one thing to work through a bunch of simple programs uh, from YouTube tutorials and getting started guides, and it's something completely different to work on a code base that is meant to serve millions of users that use an app every second. You know, and I'm saying this because I think that I should have just taken that month before my internship to relax and fully recharge before diving in during the summer into the internship. I tend to set the bar pretty high when it comes to stuff like this, but my team really didn't expect me to come in knowing anything. The expectation was that I was going to be seeing their code base for the very first time, and that I'd have a ton of questions and I'd be learning the entire summer. So if you're going into an Amazon internship this coming summer, don't stress out about going in not knowing anything, because that's what's expected, that you're not gonna know anything, and that you're gonna ask a ton of questions, and that you're gonna need to learn a lot of things. And that's the whole point of the internship, so if you have some time, some free time before your internship starts, enjoy it, because you'll have enough time to dive in and learn a bunch of stuff once the internship actually starts. All right, so let's take a look at the biggest section by far, which is during the internship. Now, the first thing that I wish I had done differently during the internship was to take notes on how to set up your environment. Setting up my computer was quite possibly one of the most annoying parts of the entire internship just because I was so stubborn and decided not to take notes on how I set it up. The instructions were all spread out across a couple different pages and at any one time I was referencing four to five different tabs. So inevitably when my computer actually failed, I had to reopen all of them and figure out where my setup had gone wrong. It took the whole first week of my internship in order to fix that before I could start running any code and figuring out how our application worked. Now you would think after maybe the second time of the computer failing, I would have stopped for a second and said, maybe I should take some notes on how to do this, but I didn't do that. All of this heartache could have been avoided if I had just taken some time out of my day to take notes on how this process worked the first time. But you know, I wasn't thinking like that at the time. I was thinking that I needed to be zooming through these initial setup stages because they were the simple parts of the internship. I needed to be getting to the point where I'd be coding my project and working on my project as fast as possible. But you know, you're just gonna make it harder on yourself if you go very quickly through these simple setup stages and end up messing them up and having to spend more time figuring out how to fix your setup versus how to get started on your project. All that you're doing at that point by moving very fast through the initial setup stuff is you're setting yourself up for failure. Looking back now and what I would recommend to you and my past self is to take the time, slow down in the beginning, take notes on all this little tedious setup portion because it's going to help you when inevit inevitably during the internship your computer starts failing again and you don't have to go back and surf through four to five different pages in order to figure out how to reset up your computer. You're just going to waste a lot more time later on that could be avoided by just taking a little time in the beginning and have notes that you can reference at any time during the internship. Looking back now, what I would recommend to you and what I would recommend to my past self is to take the time to take notes on all these tedious setup processes. It may seem like a waste of time, but trust me, you'll get to your project soon enough 
and when inevitably your environment starts to fail, you at least have a better place to start troubleshooting from instead of having to start from the very beginning and look through all those four to five files in order to figure out where in the process your setup failed. All right, so next up is that mentor meetings are not checkup meetings. This was my greatest fear going into the internship because I had never had a job where I had daily mentor meetings or group team meetings where we had to discuss our work. I had only previously worked in fast food up to this point and all that the managers did there was check the inventory and talk to complaining customers. So you can imagine the worry that I had about thinking that my mentor or my manager was going to think that I was dumb for asking so many questions or that they'd be thinking that I was slacking off. But guess what? That didn't happen. There were days when I had a ton of questions and a lot of code that I wanted my mentor to take a look at, and we spent the entirety of the meeting just going through all of this. But there were also days where I had just started a new part of my project and I didn't have any questions to ask or any code to look at. I didn't get questioned about why I didn't have any questions or I didn't have any code to look at. Instead, my mentor just let me cut our meeting short and he said if I needed help later on during the day that he was just a quick call away. He wasn't waiting for me to slip up and nor was anyone else on my team waiting for me to slip up. They were all very helpful and they just wanted to see me succeed. And if I had known that before the internship had started, I probably would have saved myself a lot of unneeded stress. Also, I just found out that my mentor actually subscribed to my YouTube channel. So Spencer, if you're watching this, uh, thank you for being such a great mentor and helping me out throughout the entire summer. And while I have this like button up right here, let me remind you to smash the like button and to subscribe for more Amazon college and tech related content being uploaded to my channel every week. And make sure to go check out my other Amazon internship videos, which I will put a link to probably up there. Uh, yeah, feel free to check those things out if you are interested in learning more about Amazon and my experience there. All right, but now back to the video. All right, so back to the next thing that I wish I knew before my internship, and that is that you should ask questions even if you think they are dumb questions. I feel like this is something that people say about everything from school, relationships, to work, uh, but it's really hard to put into practice. And I'm no exception to this. I always tell myself that I'm not gonna care what other people think and just say what's on my mind, but I still find myself kind of holding back and not asking the questions that I really want to ask. I got a lot more comfortable asking my mentor questions pretty quickly just because I saw him every day and I always talked to him, but it took a little bit longer to get comfortable with the rest of my team. Yeah, I just didn't want to bombard them with questions of like, do you know what class stores this data? Uh, my tests aren't running, can you help me troubleshoot this? I'm confused with some code, can anyone brainstorm with me real quick? Which is completely dumb because these are all very valid questions and things that you'd expect would come up during the job and you'd want some help with. They were also all very necessary questions that I needed answered in order to move forward in my project. And because of me worrying so much about coming off as dumb, I did the dumb thing and just banged my head against my desk for hours trying to figure it out on my own instead of just asking a question and getting it figured out in a quick 30 minute video call with someone from my team. So the point that I'm trying to make here is just, you're not gonna come off as dumb and no one's gonna think you're dumb for asking these kinds of questions. Your manager, your mentor, the other people on your team were all in a similar position to you when they first started at Amazon. So they completely understand the position that you're in trying to figure everything out and get accustomed to it and just be able to move forward with your project. They understand that you're gonna need some extra help so you may as well just ask them questions and not think that you're gonna come off as dumb because you're not. Don't think that you have to work even if there is no work to be done. I am guilty of overworking myself. There, I said it. I am human and I need to be loved and I need to find things in order to fill my time even when there's nothing that I need to do. Let me tell you, it is not fun to sit at your computer waiting for hours doing nothing just because you need a piece of information that isn't gonna come until tomorrow in order to move forward in your project. But that's exactly what I did at times. I just sat there and did nothing even though I had nothing to do and I could have just gone away from my computer and rested for a bit. So don't do that. Don't waste your time just sitting there doing nothing. Like looking back on it now, what I wish I would have done is to use that extra time to relax, to get out of my office space and go exercise a bit more or to pro be proactive and plan for what I was gonna do the next day once I got the actual piece of information that I needed. Like all of those are much healthier things to do than just sit at your desk 
banging your head, not doing anything. You know, this isn't a nine to five job where you're expected to stay at work until you've worked your eight hours. Like if there, there's gonna be days where you have a ton of meetings and a ton of code and you're gonna work the full eight hours and that's fine. But there's also gonna be days where there isn't much to do. You're waiting on information. You're waiting on another team. Um, to give you something and you're probably not going to end up working the full eight hours and that's completely fine No one is going to think that you're lazy or unmotivated for working less hours as long as you are productive in the hours That you are working and you're getting your work done So feel free to take full advantage of that be productive and be focused when you have the information and the tools at your disposal But when it's a slow day and you don't have much to do Take advantage of that as well. Make sure to rest get refreshed so that you can start tackling the problems the next day or later fully refreshed and ready to go to focus again. And the final thing that I wish I knew about during my internship is that, God, I feel like I've been talking for so long. Uh, it's okay to make a mistake, just get help right away. I'm not ashamed to tell you guys that I made many mistakes during my internship. I deleted my whole project off of my computer twice used because I entered the wrong git command. I submitted incorrect code reviews the first couple of times where I sent either the wrong code or no code at all. I even forgot in my final presentation to write down some key metrics that I knew were gonna be asked about during the presentation and I didn't have anything to talk about during the presentation. And guess what? I'm still going to be an Amazon software engineer in the summer. I know it can feel awful to make mistakes, but realize that a mistake only remains a mistake if you never learn from it, you know, and the best way to learn from your mistakes is to reach out and ask for help from your mentor, your team or your manager. You know, it isn't going to be the first time that they have to help an intern because they accidentally deleted something using Git that they accidentally uh, sent to code review incorrectly. Like none of this stuff is new. They've, they've experienced that before and it's, they're not going to judge you for it. If anything, they're gonna be really happy that you reach out for help before making the mistake because it show, it's gonna show that you're proactive in trying to prevent these kinds of things. You're going to end up being a lot more productive member of the team because you'll learn how to troubleshoot those things. And so the next time something like that comes up, you'll be able to fix it for someone else or for yourself. And that's gonna mean less work for your team. So ask your questions, reach out to your team, and don't sit for hours trying to fix something that could easily be fixed with just a quick 30 minute call to a team member. Don't waste your time. All right, so for after the internship, again, similar to before the internship, I only have one thing for this section, and that is that it's okay to reach out to your manager, 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 or your mentor for advice after the internship. So this is something that I didn't take full advantage of. Like your manager, your mentor, and even certain members of your team are very good references not just for like if applying to a later job, but also for yourself to figure out what you did well during the internship, maybe something that you struggled with during the internship. Like these are all normal things to ask for after an internship because you've, you've essentially worked at a job for about three months and you have to know like what you did well during the job and what you didn't. If you ever want to grow and get better and possibly actually get a full-time job in the industry or at Amazon, you know, the, I wish I'd taken more advantage of this. Uh, obviously, I got the full-time offer, so I know I did well, but I wish I had been a bit more proactive about asking stuff that I could improve upon, um, just so that once I go into being a full-time engineer, I'll kind of know what I need to keep in the back of my mind of like, I need to improve upon this uh, while I'm working here. But yeah, also in terms of just, uh, in terms of adding like Amazon internship onto my resume, talking to your manager, your mentor about like how you can put the stuff that you did during the internship into words and fit it into a small section of your resume is also super beneficial and something that's completely okay to do. So if that's something that you wanna do after your internship, if you don't wanna go back to Amazon or you're hoping to apply to somewhere else, definitely ask your manager, your mentor, or some of your team members for help putting this information onto your resume. Cause yeah, that's completely fine. And they would understand that you would want to uh, get help with something like that. And that's it. That is everything that I wish I knew before starting my Amazon software engineering internship. I feel like I've said a lot and yet I feel like I haven't said anything new, but hopefully you all found it very helpful if you're planning on starting an internship at Amazon soon or you're planning to apply sometime in the near future. Feel free to learn from my mistakes and remember to have a good time. It really is a fantastic experience and it's a great way to make a lot of money in the process too. If you wanna hear more about my Amazon internship experience, such as how much I got paid, what project I worked on, then feel free to check out this video right here 
or if you'd like some tips on how to pass your Amazon interview so that you can apply what I've talked about in this video, then feel free to check out this video right over there. Again, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.